Hello, pen people. Today I'm not talking about a fountain pen. I'm talking about ballpoints. And the reason I'm doing it is because of this pen right here, and I'll explain more later. But one of the things that many of us may not realize is that the ballpoint pen, the history of it, dates back to the same time that the fountain pen was being developed. The idea behind the ballpoint pen is that you have a ball um, usually housed inside of a socket, and this is kind of a cutaway view, and that what happens is is that the ink is loaded into the a chamber behind the ball so that it comes down like this, and that as the ball rotates in the socket, it will drag the ink around itself and then it will go onto the paper. The problem is, is that the very thin watery inks that were being used at the time, particularly in fountain pens, didn't regulate themselves terribly well um, going through s these small fissures. If the if this gap right here was too large, then the, the, the ink would just drip out and it would leak everywhere. Or if it was too tight, they just wouldn't write very well. I guess maybe the biggest problem behind all of that was that the the ability to develop and design and machine these parts to such precision just was difficult at the time. And so it just didn't quite work. But what happened was, is that a gentleman by the name of Laszlo Biro um, in the early uh, 1900s um, started playing with the idea after having seen a newspaper print ink work. Um, the way newspaper print ink is, is that it's thick and viscous. It's kind of a greasy ink, and it is smeared over the type and then pressed into the paper and dries almost immediately. And he was very intrigued by this very rapidly drying ink, and he thought it would be wonderful to put it into a pen. He tried it with various different designs. It never quite worked all that well. Then his brother George, or I'm probably not pronouncing it properly, um, but... Um, they he said, well, why don't you use one of these ballpoint designs? And you have this viscous ink here that um, instead of dripping out, it just can't because it's so thick. It, instead, you'll have this ball dragging through a very thick, viscous ink, and it won't leak um, because this kind of greasy ink will just coat that ball. It won't dribble out, and it will work. And he was absolutely correct. And so what he developed eventually became what we call the, you know, the BIC ballpoint. And now BIC is another company. It's a French company. And what happened was, is, you know, historically what the chain of events was. By 1938, um, Laszlo Biro had his patent and he had the ballpoint and he was producing them in small numbers. He was on vacation and he ran into the president of Argentina. The president of Argentina invited him to come to Argentina and begin, begin uh, building his pens there, which he did. Um, but they didn't receive um, massive commercial appeal. But one of the wonderful things about what happened was is that um, Biro and his family were able to move to Argentina prior to World War II and the, um, the problems that Jewish families like his had with uh, the Nazi regime and all of that that happened in Europe. And so it was a blessing that he was able to, uh, to leave um, Europe at the time. Anyway. Sorry, it's such a dark uh, turn of events there, but it's it was a, a good thing for Bic, uh, sorry, Biro and his family. Um, now, Bic was a company in, in France that was looking into manufacturing um, many different things, but he contacted Biro and said, hey, can we work up a design of your pen and I'll license your patent and we will do some uh, design um, adjustments and we will create uh, a commercially viable and very reliable pen. And so what we have here is basically the thing that Bick and his engineers came up with based on the Bureau patents. And you see the, the tip there is metal, it's brass, and inside of it is a very hard steel or tungsten ball. And it's basically the same design as here, but you have this thick viscous ink coming down. It's held in a plastic tube. Now the plastic tube is thin enough that the ink can't drain back out very easily, and it doesn't. Um, being a very thick ink, it isn't, doesn't tend to do that, but if you made that that chamber, that, that tube, any wider, it might help the, the ink drain out the back. And you see this hole right here on the side of the barrel, and that allows air to enter because you always have an air-to-ink interchange. If you had no way for air to enter inside the barrel, 
the, the even a viscous ink like this will just wouldn't come out. Um, it has to be able air has to come in here so the ink can go out there, and that's something that's a de design feature of fountain pens, which uh, you know as I mentioned were being developed at about the same time. But fountain pens are so much more complex. They have um, these complex etern internal mechanisms. You know, here we have a piston for for you know sucking up the ink, um, and then you have these complex feed designs that will, that can control the slow leak of ink out of the pen to the tip um, without pouring out and at a consistent rate. So it, the engineering is very complex in these, and, and in comparison, the ballpoint pen is incredibly simple. It's simply a ball in a socket with some viscous ink behind it. Now, there's more to it than that, of course, but it is rather simple. There isn't a whole lot of it to it, and there literally is only one moving part, which is that ball. Anyway, so the ballpoint basically killed the fountain pen because there are a handful of things that people want from a good pen. They want it to be reliable. They want it to work whenever uh, you you open it up and and, and uh, go to write. It uh, shouldn't be messy. It should be it should, should be convenient, reliable, and um, just not require a whole lot of maintenance. But fountain pens, by their very nature, require all of those things. They're they're they may be fairly reliable. Um, they can be, you know, as, um, as user-friendly as they possibly can be, but they will never quite match the reliability of a ballpoint. There have been several attempts uh, through his, you know, through the history of the fountain pen to, to counteract the advent of the fountain of the ballpoint. And the fact is, is that there were a lot of good, reliable fountain pens that were developed. Um, for example, this is the Parker 51. It's a very good, reliable fountain pen and has a, a very interesting collector uh, of ink in here. This one happens to be a vacuumatic filler. Um, so again, it's fairly complex. You know, there's a filling mechanism and all of that, and still, as good as and reliable as this is, it still isn't going to be quite as reliable as one of these cheap e fountain, uh, sorry, ballpoint pens. Another pen design that came out after the advent of the ballpoint was this one by uh, Schaefer. Schaefer was trying to counteract some of the um, the problems with getting ink on your fingers filling a, pe a pen. So they developed this snorkel filling system where you get this snorkel that comes out, you stick the snorkel into the ink and you press this down and it sucks ink up into the barrel of the pen. And as wonderful as this is, and the fact that it really does work, it obviously is very complicated, and it still can be messy and still not quite as reliable as, and, and never as cheap as the ballpoint pen. Um, I don't know what these are going for now. I actually bought this one probably 10 years ago. I bought a pack of 10. It was a dollar, um, which is pretty astounding. Um, I know that they're not that cheap anymore. Um, but you can get these ballpoint pens for, for almost nothing. Now, this pen has never been used. It has been sitting in my drawer. It's Like I said, it's about 10 years old. Will it work? Of course it will. This is the thing that basically killed the fountain pen, is the incredible reliability and use of these ballpoint pens. And the fact that you know the whole world basically switched to them is not any real, real surprise. Um, so why is this here? Well, I wanted to talk about the different kinds of ballpoint pens that are out there. Um, oh, and I wanted to mention one other type of fountain pen that um, has been developed. And this one came about in the, believe it or not, in the mid-60s. And it too was an attempt to create a pen that could um, at least compete with ballpoints at the time, but still be a fountain pen. And this is based on the um, the Pilot Namiki vanishing point this i have a vanishing point i just didn't want to dig it out this is the the moon man version or mahjong or whatever they're calling themselves now um it's a fountain pen that is click activated but there is a nib and a and then there's the comp complicated um there's a you know a feed section and all that stuff in here actually it's not terribly complicated but you know it's still a fountain pen and it has a little trap door with a seal and all that stuff in here um, this is not nearly as good as the pilot version, but it works. Um, anyway, so there was there were several attempts at developing fountain pens that would be as reliable as the ballpoint, 
but it really was never going to happen. So there have been several different versions of, of ballpoints since then, and one of the ones that's interesting to me, and it came not too long after, and I don't remember, and I really don't know the timing of this. But then there came out what's called the rollerball. And the rollerball is kind of an interesting because basically those early ballpoint designs that happened in the, the mid to late 1800s using fountain pen ink and that just didn't work because they, they didn't have the tolerances or whatever to make it work um, actually became reality with the rollerball. This is basically um, a cartridge filled with fountain pen type ink. It's very, very wet, watery based ink. And then there is a ballpoint tip on it, typically smaller than your usual ballpoint. So, you know, if you can compare the tips of, you know, the two balls and the tips on these, the, the roller balls tend to be uh, smaller because they deliver a wet ink that, that in turn creates a thicker line. But you can see it writes quite well. And one of the nice things about these, because they're delivering a water-based ink, they tend to ha have more even flow of the ink that it comes out because one of the things that ballpoints do when you write with them is there's always kind of this weird like blank spot on the ball it's not completely coating the ball of the of the the mechanism anyway to get a smooth very very consistent line and the other thing about ballpoints the standard ballpoints is this thick greasy ink really is so viscous that you have to apply a certain amount of pressure and there's a bit amount of, of drag as you roll that ball around or force it around through that thick ink and then onto the paper, that it's not, it, it requires a little bit of pressure, whereas roller balls require less, not as little as, as fountain pens do. Um, and that, to me, is part of the charm of a fountain pen is it doesn't require much pressure to write. But anyway, back to the ballpoints. <clears throat> One of the things you can do with these, and there are videos about this, where you can actually pry out the cap in the back and you can refill them with fountain pen ink and they will continue to work. Um, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, so there are uh, the standard ballpoints with the greasy, thick, viscous ink in them. And then there was the development of the modern roller ball, which uses the same water-based ink that fountain pens do. It may be slightly different, but anyway. <clears throat> and then later came the hybrid, which is a gel. Um, I think I have a gel pen here. Yeah, here's one. So, in you know, a lot of one of the beauties too of a, of a ballpoint is they don't need to be capped. You you don't have to have a cap on it. it. If I set this like this in my drawer, it would still work just as well as with the cap. The cap does protect the point, though. Um, one of the things that's interesting too is that the cap has a great big hole in the end of it, and that's for you know an anti choking hazard. But um, it it just proves the point that they don't need to be sealed to keep themselves from drying out. Anyway, gel pens are kind of the same way. They're just a slight variation on the ballpoint design. They typically have larger tubes containing the ink, and um, the ink is kind of a hybrid between the thin water inks that fountain pens use and the thick viscous inks that the standard ballpoints use. Um, but it is um, it, it 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 allows for kind of a good um, smooth writing experience with not very much pressure required. And it's actually quite nice, and a lot of people find these to be superior to any of the other um, ballpoint type of pens. Um, so basically, you have the three types. You have the standard ballpoint, the roller ball, and then the gel. The thing about all of this, though, is that there is quite a bit, to me, of waste. You know, when you're done with one of these BICs, you write all the ink out of it. What do you do with it? Well, you throw it away. And they are selling, selling literally hundreds of millions of these pens. And so that's a, a lot of waste out there. You know, I have this Pelican pen, and the only waste that has been created by it is eventually it will empty out a glass bottle of ink. And I can use that glass bottle for something else. Um, so it's not littering a landfill. And it will write, you know... I can fill this thing with enough ink that it will it will surpass the capacity of thousands of these even over its lifetime of writing you know and ink delivery to paper. So anyway, but you know still these are so handy that it's hard to you know to to say otherwise. But a lot of people won't, don't want a cheap plasticky experience with their writing instruments, and so they opt for more expensive kind of mechanisms to hold the refills. 
Um, and that, you know, it's always kind of bugged me. I mean, I got into to stationery and stuff and writing, you know, instruments a long, long time ago, back when I was a kid. And it always kind of bugged me that it didn't matter how nice the externals were. What really mattered was the guts as far as how well it wrote. And it just seemed kind of weird that, you know, you have this very expensive outer that really is is nothing but a holder. It could have just as easily been a piece of, you know, a stick with a hole drilled in it and you just stuff the refill in it. Anyway, you know, and you have a, another version of the ballpoint is the uh, the Fisher. Uh, they have a pressurized ink chamber, so occasionally these do leak. I've had it happen to me. We're under certain conditions. The ink decides to actually move out the end of the barrel. Sometimes it'll leak out between the seals um, where the tube goes into here, or it'll actually leak out of the end. I've had all of those things happen. It doesn't happen very often, not nearly as often as leaks and fountain pens do, but it can happen. Um, so Fisher tried to d take care of that, and the, and the air interchange thing is no longer necessary because there's a charge of, I believe, nitrogen gas, and then there's a plug here that forces the ink down to the ball so that there's no need to have that air interchange, so there's less possibility of leakage. Um, but again, you have that you know the, this brass tube, and you've got all of the the parts of this that once you've used the ink out of it, you can't really do anything with it but throw it away. Um, so there still is uh, you know a bit of waste involved. Um, so back to these, you have these premium holders of pens. This is a uh, a Lamy Swift, I believe it's called. I've had this one for going on twenty plus years. Um, it's had some dents and dings to it, but it's still a decent pen. One of the fun things about it is you push down on this and the, the clip disappears back into the barrel there. And sometimes it gets hung up coming back out, but kind of an interesting design. Um, I have a few others. Let's pull them. Out. Oh, well, I should talk about the, the one ballpoint that I've owned the longest. I bought this one in Quito, Ecuador. It's a sterling silver cross pen. It twists to extend the ballpoint and retracts. Um, I bought it in 1987, so a long time ago, um, and it's still around. Do I use it? Nope, you can see it's still very tarnished, and actually this ballpoint has actually dried up. It doesn't write anymore, which those of you who have ballpoint pens, sometimes they sit too long and they just don't work anymore because they too can dry out, just not as quickly or as easily as a ball, as a fountain pen can. Um, one of the things that's uh, been kind of an interesting development too is the development of fountain pens with ball points. The first one I got was this one here. This is the J, uh, the J Urban or Jacques Urban or whatever. Um, I you know I'm fairly certain this pen is made somewhere in China. Um, but as you can see, it has a fountain pen cartridge in there. This happens to be a um, Caveco cartridge, Standard International. It has an interesting um, feed collector thing there where you can see all those fins in there. They act as the buffer between you know the cartridge of ink and it just pouring out the end of the barrel here. Um, it usually hasn't been that much of a problem with this one. Um, a lot of people don't like these because they're so cheap and they tend to feel scratchy, but mine mine has always worked fairly well it isn't an incredibly smooth experience but it's it works um and i can leave it capped and sitting like that for weeks on end even months and i'll pick it up and it will write so you know there are some possibilities if you're into ballpoints if you want to um to use your fountain pen inks this is another version um this is made by monteverde and it is the one touch engage and it, too, is a fountain pen. In fact, it has this interesting cartridge. Um, this is the ballpoint, and it can use a standard in, standard international um, converter, or you can use the cartridges and just stuff them in there. And it has this spring so that it can have the click mechanism that works. And this one is filled with Noodler's Anti-Feather Blue, which happens to work quite well in it. Um, and it too um, writes, and it is much smoother than the Jerobon is. So, you know, 
for me, if I really want, you know, wanted to use a ballpoint all the time and I wanted to make sure I could use fountain pen inks, this is probably the one I would use. It's a nice size. It's not heavy. It, it's got the click mechanism. It works. It's fairly smooth. Um, but there are still yet other options. Um, this is going to be a little messy. This, as you can see, is an old um, platinum preppy. It is filled with Noodler's Base State Blue. It's got obviously got a nib on it. It's been sitting for some time. That's why it's it's writing quite kind of dry. But one of the interesting things about this one is that it came to me with um, with that. That is a ballpoint end for this fountain pen. And I'm going to use a rag here. I'm going to pull the nib unit out and wipe it off a little bit. So that's the nib unit. And then you can just take this and stick it down in the hole that it was vacated by it. And then it'll take some time. But eventually, that little uh, fiber feed, this right here is fibrous. It's... Um, kind of the secret behind how these roller balls work. And I should have mentioned that when I was talking about this Lamy Swift. Um, there isn't just, you know, a whole bunch of wet ink just sloshing around in there. There's actually a bunch of fiber in there that's soaked, that it's basically like a, it's filled with a, a spongy material that is soaked with ink. And then there's one of these fiber feeds that goes down to the ball. And that's the reason it works. That's why these were able to um, come about. And it was something that wasn't available to inventors back in the 1800s. So eventually what will happen is, is this being soaked in ink will eventually allow ink to get to the end of the ball and start writing. It's just going to take a little bit. So we'll let that sit aside for a moment and see if we can get it to write in a little bit. But it does, um, and it works fairly well. It's not. It's a. It's it's like a half step between these two as far as the quality of the writing experience. It's not as scratchy as this, and it's not quite as smooth as this. There's another one out there, um, which... Um, Pen BBS. Yes, Pen BBS. Um, so this is the Pen BBS, I think the model 469. Um, it, so Pen BBS, um, if I haven't mentioned it before, I, you know, it's one of those companies I kind of like. I like what they make. But one of the things that's interesting about them is that oftentimes they'll sell their fountain pens with a rollerball attachment. So um, you unscrew the, the nib unit, and then they have these nib units that usually come in the box as well. They have O-rings here to seal the ink chamber so the ink doesn't leak, leak past the collar, and then, and then another one up here to doubly ensure that. And you just work it down in there and screw it in, and then you can fill the, rest, fill the pen up as you would have if it had had that on there. And um, I have found that these work fairly well. I mean, they're they're somewhat inconsistent about how smooth they are, um, but they're you know, and I'm I'm fairly certain that these are inexpensive enough that you could get them replaced. I actually have a handful of them. You know, I have a you know a good half dozen or more, probably closer to a dozen, um, pen BBS pens, um, and so I have a whole bunch of these uh, roller balls, you know, sections lying around. So you know, if you really want to use occasionally a ballpoint along with your fountain pen you have that option from pen bbs as well um, i know that noodlers also um, has rollerball pens um, that in that are available out there for the conrad and and others uh, in fact he makes us a line of inks um, that were intended for rollerballs called the roller eel inks Okay, now let's get down to these pens here. Um, one of the things that I have liked for some time are these machined pens, and I have quite a few uh, machined metal fountain pens. And um, we have a couple of brands here, um, in fact, just two. And I've got a third hiding here somewhere. Oh, there it is. And you will have seen this one in a, another video I did elsewhere on my channel. But so these are all heavy machined, um, basically holders for your your ballpoint 
uh, re cartridge of choice. Um, the one I've had the longest is this one here. This is made by Kara's Customs. It is one of the early um, of the G2 um, bolt pens that they make. It's all aluminum, and it has a serious flaw, and that is that the barrel is so smooth that this anodized barrel is that as you hold on to it and you write with it, it just slides out of your hand, and that's just ridiculous. So I put this rubber uh, grip section on it. Um, but the, the action is pretty cool. You you know, this bolt action where you extend and retract the ball um, by manipulating that. And this has a Pilot G2, which is one of those gel um, refills in it. And it opens up like this, and there's that G2 refill. Um, and I have this uh, heavy copper one, which is essentially the same thing, but um, it's not as long because... It holds a Parker type ballpoint in it. Um, so you can get these in ballpoint and gel um, iterations. Um, honestly, I have not paid full price for any of these. Um, this one I got, it's a, like a grab bag special where they just randomized the colors of what came out. And I think it was just a happy coincidence that it came out in Earth Tones, which is kind of my thing. Um, this one too was also kind of a grab bag deal where they were just selling um, leftover pens um, on the Kara's Customs website. This one too is a G2, uh, but this obviously has a cap. And that's one of the things that kind of bugs me about, you know, if you've got a rollerball or a ballpoint, the whole point to me is the convenience of them. So why would you not have a click activated one? Why would you have one where you have to unscrew the cap like a fountain pen? Because it's not necessary. Um, but yeah, this one works just fine. It's just a, you know, like I said, a G2 refill is in there. Um, this one I got in a, another kind of a grab bag deal from County Com. And this thing is a beast. It is incredibly heavy. It is close to the heaviest pen that I've ever held. Um, solid brass. And it can, comes with a, uh, it came with a, uh, a Schneider or something like that refill that was terrible. It wouldn't write. So I actually had to get a drill and drill down just a tiny bit more so that the Fisher refill would fit in it. And now it fits absolutely perfectly. There is no spring in this. Where this tightens down right here is exactly where this refill needs it to keep it solid in there. And um, this is a Fisher. Um, and it's in the green color. But, you know, of all of the standard ballpoints, um, I like the Fisher refills best. But this is just a beast, and it's heavy, and again, it has that drawback of needing a cap. But anyway, it's kind of interesting. Those of you who are into ball pens, that might be one to look at. And then my friend Dave, he had one of these, which is a tactile turn and uh, bolt action pen. And it's different because it has this little lever thing right here that you operate to work the bolt to make the, um, cart you know, the, the point come out. And one of the things that I really like about this one is it's got this machined... Um, these are machined, super fine grooves all down the barrel. So it's very grippy. It doesn't slide out of your hand like an all metal pen would normally, kind of like this one does. Copper, you know, those of you who've used copper, it's got some traction to it. It doesn't really need the, the, the grooves machined into it to hold on to it. So it's not been as much of an issue with that. Um, and this is a great pen. It's one, of, and I thought, you know, okay, this is all the the ballpoint pen I will ever need. I don't need any more ballpoint pens. But then I won this one in a um, kind of a giveaway from Keras Customs, and this was a one-off. This is a green anodized titanium pen. Um, it's the same design essentially as the older um, bolt action. However, they were able to make it so that they moved the action higher up into the the barrel so that you can still fit a full-size G2 in there without making the pen abnormally long like this one is. And that's one of the, the other gripes I have about this one is it's just so long for a ball pen. What, you know, it's just because the action has moved down so far into the barrel that they redesigned it so it was closer to the top, which is great. And the other thing they did is they machined it with a groove right here for a an O-ring so that the barrel won't unscrew. And that is an issue that I've had with both of these is that the barrel has unscrewed from the 
has, has unscrewed. And so this one came with that groove and um, I think that they just forgot to add an O-ring to it. And because I have my bundle of O-rings from Pen BBS, I was able to find one that fit on that groove and it works just great. And this dragon skin is what they call that. This, this, these, you know, milling uh, marks and stuff in the barrel here to add grip. Um, so they call it dragon skin. Um, does help and it allows you to hold on to the pen better. Still, it's not a pen I think that I would want to use for super long writing uh, sessions. You know, I, that's what my fountain pens are for. Um, but, you know, in a pinch when you're out somewhere and you've got to write something down quickly uh, on some difficult surfaces or whatever and you just need a reliable pen, it's hard to beat a ballpoint pen. Um, find one you like, you know, if it's just the Bic Crystal and get super cheap, a whole bunch of them, they're going to be reliable, they're going to work, you know, and all of these will be interesting and they'll be reliable writing pens, but for me, they will never quite match the flair and the fun of writing with a fountain pen. So I'll stop there and I hope you have a good rest of your day. And this is the last time I'll be talking about ballpoints. Thanks. Bye.